In this video, we're going to look at setting up Logic's advanced tools, how to check the frame rate and sample rate of a movie, and then how to import that movie and extract the audio into Logic as well. When you first buy and install Logic Pro X, it's set up in a very basic way. It's to make it a bit more user-friendly, a bit easier to, to get to grips with, but it does mean that a lot of the tools are limited which makes it a bit more like GarageBand. And GarageBand's a great program, but if you've paid so much money for Logic Pro X, why would you want to use it like GarageBand? So the first thing we want to do is actually turn on those advanced tools. When you first open Logic Pro X, it will probably open up a new blank project or, or, or the template chooser like this. And then you'll have this instrument chooser. Again, very, very basic. It looks different when you set it up in the advanced tool. So let's just choose a software instrument for now, because we're not actually going to use this project. You can see they even make it look pretty by putting these little wooden edges on it. The first thing we want to do is click on Logic Pro X, go to Preferences, Advanced Tools, and then you tick the box that says Show Advanced Tools, and make sure all of these are ticked, or you can just tick Enable All at the bottom. And straight away you see our little wooden edges have gone, because now they're treating you like a professional, not like someone who's just playing around. Okay, for the sake of this video, I'm just going to close these two windows again now, and we'll come back to that template chooser. The next important thing to know is about sample rates and frame rates for the project that you're going to be working on. This is vital because if you get this wrong, your project won't sync up, your music won't sync up with the project that you're working on. So this is the video that we're going to work on for this course, uh, just a, a little home video that I've, I've put together essentially, which is what I'm hoping is the type of thing you might be working on too. If we open that on Mac, it will open with QuickTime as, as standard. And you can click on Window, Show Movie Ex Inspector. The shortcut is Command-I. And if you click on that, it gives you this little inspector that tells you a load of information about the project, so you can see where it's saved. Its format, its frame rate, and then the data size, data rate, etc. So this is AAC, but you can see this, 48,000 hertz. That's a really important number to know because that tells us the sample rate for the film. And then FPS is frames per second, and it's set to 30. Something else that's really, really important to know when it comes to syncing up the audio with the movie. A sample rate, to put simply, is kind of how many times the computer looks at the project, whether that's audio or video, per second. So this is looked at 48,000 times per second. The standard in audio or for CDs was 44.1 kilohertz or 44,100 times per second. And that means that if you try to dump a CD 44.1 kilohertz project or audio file into a 48 kilohertz movie file, it's going to be slightly out of sync because for every second, it's looking at 44,100 versus 48,000 samples. And the program will try and stretch it to make sure it's looking at it 48,000 times, but there aren't that many samples for it to look at. It sounds a bit complicated, but once you get your head around it, it totally makes sense. So we need to know that this project, this movie is 48 kilohertz, which most movies are, and the frame rate's 30. That's not entirely standard for 30, actually. A lot of times it's 29.97 or even 24 frames per second. And Logic is aware of that, so it warns you when you try to set it up. So now let's set up Logic. So let's go back to Logic Pro and we'll go new from the template chooser. One thing that I, I often recommend as well is to click down on this details tab here, because every time you open Logic now, you'll see this whole window, including the details, and that will remind you that, ah, I need to think about sample rate and frame rate. You can see I've already set this up. So my sample rate's at 48 kilohertz and my frame rate is 30 frames per second. So that means that this will sync with that video that I have. Actually, you'll see if I just change this, and go back to 30. Logic gives me a little warning. Are you sure about using exactly 30 frames per second? Because video is often 29.97. I've checked and this video is 30 frames per second, so I'm gonna make sure I do choose 30. For smaller projects, it's unlikely that you'll be working in surround, so don't worry about changing the surround format. You won't be able to access those controls unless you choose surround effects or instruments anyway. And here's our Logic project. For the sake of getting set up, don't worry too much about what you choose right now. Let's just choose a software instrument. 
just a side note as well, you probably have another two options here. I've not got those at the moment because my sample drive is not connected. So don't worry if yours looks a bit different. Just choose anything for now. And we're going to look at how to import a movie. So there are a couple of ways of importing the movie. The easiest way is to just click File, Movie, Open Movie. Or again, the shortcut is Alt-Command-O for Open. The alternate way is to open your global tracks, which is by clicking on this little down arrow here, or G is the shortcut for that. The global tracks are where you have such information as the arrangement, your markers, time signatures, tempos. If you're doing any beat mapping or anything like that, that all shows up in these extra tracks. If you right click in here, you can open the movie global tracks option. And this is where you can see all of your movie information. So we can click on movie and then open movie. That's the other way of getting to this same setting. Like I said, the easier way is to go to file open movie or use the shortcut Alt Command O. And now we choose our movie. Now Logic's clever. If I'd have set this up wrong, if I'd set it up with 44.1 kilohertz and uh, 24 frames per second, it will tell me. It will say the sample rate's not right, the frame rate's not right. You need. Do you want to use the new sample rate and frame rate? in which case I would choose yes, obviously. The reason why it's so encouraged to set up those things before you import your movie is you might not be actually move, working to the movie. You might be creating a track separately. Or if you've done your MIDI in one and you're doing your audio mixing in another, you want to make sure that your mixing project is also set up at 48 kilohertz too. So do think about it. Don't rely on Logic to fix it for you. Let's open this video just by double clicking or click on open at the bottom. And you'll get this little dialogue warning as well that says open movie. This movie contains an audio track. Do you want to open the movie and extract the audio track? Yes, make sure both of those are ticked. If you untick open the movie, then your movie won't come into logic. And if you untick extract the audio track, the audio will remain attached to the movie, but you won't be able to see it in your arrange window. So you won't be able to do anything with it. And really it's handy to have it there so that we can mute it easily. We can chop little bits on smaller projects in particular, it's sometimes down to you to actually do little bits in the in the sound as well. So make sure you extract the audio track too. And then click OK. So by default, it opens quite large on the screen or the original movie size. You can change the size of that by just clicking and dragging. And you can actually click on the little X to close it. Don't worry, it doesn't completely remove it. You'll see if I click on the X, the movie just comes down to this small preview window here. And as we move along, you can see it there instead. You'll also see that it's created a new audio track with the name of the video, Lila Course Video, and you can see the audio file, audio waves within that region. The, another quick little trick, there's this button up here, which is called Waveform Zoom. And if you click on that, it makes the waveforms bigger in the audio track, so you can see things a bit more clearly where things are happening. That's really helpful. Now we've actually done something in Logic now, so what's the first thing we should do? Save it. I'm going to say that a lot, but keep saving as you go. Anytime you do anything, just save. Get in the habit of having your hand hovering over the Command S part of the keyboard, and you can push your thumb on Command and your finger on S, and you can just keep every every now and again just keep hitting Command S, Command S, Command S to save. So I'm going to save this somewhere sensible as well. I'm going to save it into this uh, course that we're working on, and I'm going to give it a sensible title. the same as the name of the movie. When you come to saving in Logic as well, you actually have a couple of options. You can save as a package or a folder. I actually prefer saving as a folder. That probably stems from, I started on Logic 9, and it would always save as, as a folder as default, but you can get quicker access to files within that folder a bit easier and choose what you want to save. So you can copy any audio files into the project. Unless you you know that this file this folder that you're creating is always going to be your project folder, I'd also recommend copying the movie file as well so that it doesn't go missing. Now, again, you can save it as a folder or a package. That's entirely up to you. Packages are a bit neater because you just have one file with everything in it. The folder, you'll have subfolders within it with lots of different things there too. So let's save as a folder. Make sure we've got audio files copied and our movie files copied. We're not going to be working with any specific importing samples or impulse responses or anything like that. So We'll just have those two saved for now. We don't want to make the file massive. And you'll see now that that's saved in here, you'll see because we did it as a folder, 
now we have this drop down. We have the project and the audio files and the movie files. And you can see in audio files, we have the video from the audio from the video. And in the movie file, we have that original video. So they're never going to go missing. If we just saved it as a project, I use Shift Command S, I can do save as again. If we save it as a package, you'll see I'll just rename it something else. Number two in here. I'll just call it package so we know which one's which. In the finder now, you can see I have instead of another folder, I've got just a logic pro uh, logic symbol here instead. So this is the first one that I saved, which is as folders, and this one is saved as a package. Now you can right click and show package contents to access those other things, the audio files and movie files. It's just when it comes to copying out f files from there, it can be a bit more complicated than if you've got them in a folder as I had the first time around. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that so I don't confuse myself later. And that's it. Our movie's all set up in Logic and we're ready to move on to the next step.